Welcome back to the Seeking Success Podcast, the number one podcast in Toronto. Today, we have a very special guest. We got DK in the house. What's up? What's up? What's going on? Let's go. Bro, DK, we're hyped to have you on, man. We saw like you perform with the likes of of uh, Fox. Blank it out of here. Smiley. Of Smiley. Mm-hmm. Ru- uh, not Roadrunner. Ram Riddles. Ram Riddles. Yep. That's pretty big stuff, bro. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what's um, actually my cousin? Really? Yeah, Ram Riddles. Which one? Yeah. Ram? Okay, yeah. that's well, what's not up. not Smiley, though. I look like Smiley's cousin. <laughs> nah, you never know, bro. <laughs> Shout out Ram. Big up Ram. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm kidding. He's not actually my cousin. Oh, shit. All but right. Do you think I look like him? Uh, I don't know, a little before. bit, a little bit, maybe, but nah, I'm gonna say nah. That's bro. what I think. I don't think I look like him. Nah, nah. Yeah, I don't think you look like him at all, bro. Is yeah. he from like Palestine or something? No, he's from Toronto. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Let's start this thing off, bro. How'd you get into music? I've always been doing music, like as a kid in the hood with my dogs. We would make music on the dollar store mic and that. So we were always doing that. And then during COVID, uh, my producer Matt actually linked up with me, and he was just like, "Yo, let me hear your stuff." And then he heard what I had just going on playing around. He said, "Come to the stew," and then it's locked in from there. So. That's pretty sick. So. Wait, so you record with your dogs? Yeah, I was recording with my dogs when I was younger, but now I do it by myself. Like I go to the studio, I treat it like work, just punch in, do what I gotta do. You know? That's sick. So like what? They're like barking and shit on camera. <laughs> I know what you mean by the dogs. I'm sure you know what the dogs I mean. <laughs> oh, oh, like your friends. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, my bad, my sure. bad. It flew over my head. Stop talking about your pets and shit. I'm like, that'd be hard, bro. You know, yeah. woof woof. That's what, that's what speed does, right? <laughs> is that what he does? I Ashe think so. Speed? He does. He does. You, do you know actual speed? What is the that? Streamer. The streamer speed. I seen him, the guy of the Ronaldo fan. Right? Yeah, 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 I seen yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He literally be barking on his tracks. Like he actually be like, rrr, rrr, like really? on his music. How do how do people receive the, the barking? Do they like it or what? well, like it gets Bro, views. So it's I, weird. Yeah, okay. His fans are pretty much younger mm-hmm. kids, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess they're into that shit, uh-huh, like barking the, back and shit. The, twi- the Twitch folk. <laughs> yeah, the Twitch, yeah, the Twitch people. Makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. That's crazy. What do you feel about that, man? Because like you're 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 in an age of like. You were entering this new age of hip hop, yeah. and then you, I noticed in your music you still have that soca vibe. Mm-hmm. How do you position your music to be more relevant to today? Bro, honestly, I just try to be myself. I try okay. to do what feels good to me, what feels right to me, and hopefully people resonate with that, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Nah, yeah, I yeah. feel that. I feel yeah. that. Yo, so when you go into music, <laughs> what's your writing process like? Do you just you pick a beat first, and then you start writing, or do you kind of write and then pick a beat? I pick a beat, take it to the studio, and just vibe out so i freestyle songs mostly like just vibe out and if there's a song that i really feel passionate about i might write something but usually just freestyling mm. yeah. yo i want i want to ask you because this is a a common theme i'm seeing a lot of newer artists they're literally struggling to go to the studio because the fucking engineers charge them like 50 bucks which whatever I, i'm not the one i'm not saying anything about the price but these people are like shit i can't pay 50 mm-hmm. an hour with the mix and master for an mm-hmm. hour and it's like mm-hmm. you make one song and it's like more times it's a shit song you know <laughs> what, what advice do you have for people who are struggling to actually get that studio time because they can't afford it. How can people start to make more music? If you're struggling with studio time and it's an issue financially, I would say do more prep. Like don't go there and try and make the song in the studio. Mm-hmm. Find mm-hmm. a beat and make the song. Practice the song before you get there. Yeah. So when you get there, you're literally just punching in. Mm-hmm. Cost you no know, less, less time, less money. Yeah. That's, the best that's fair, it. bro. But yo, sometimes I feel like it's like because we, we've had artists come in and out of the studio, and it's like we've seen the creative process, and you know how it is when you're just yeah. starting, you're just dicking around, mm-hmm, taking twenty mm-hmm. minutes to find a beat. No yeah, one even yeah, spit yeah. a verse yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it makes sense to actually hand write some stuff beforehand, come into the studio. Yeah, I never, I never been one of those guys dicking yeah. around in the studio. Fair. Yeah. You have any crazy stories in the studio? Crazy stories. Nah. Sometimes some shorties be coming in the studio. Girls come in, and then. You get distracted, you know, your mind yeah. goes after music. But apart from that, it just works for me. I just try to work and lock in, you know? Yeah, so okay, you, be, so. you be fucking girls with the stew. <laughs> nah, nah, not in the stew, but you're, after the stew. You, you take them to the car, a quick like Go place is a good place. I like go place after the studio. It's a nice vibe, for sure. Oh, okay. It's actually a vibe, stuff. Yeah. So I got to go there, bro. I've never been there you before. you never been there before? Bro, we got to someone finesse, but you can't. They the won't let you bring it. There? Yeah, they won't. They won't. Because, like, not only when you... Bro, let's talk about go place for a second, bro. Okay. That place... Is some Chinese mafia shit, bro. <laughs> You're not telling me, bro, they built a multi-million dollar spa and charged 70 bones to come in. Uh, bro, that's some bro. foo-foo shit going on behind uh, the scenes, bro. I say that much. Really? Yeah. You think I, so? I it's honestly, a bit too nice. <laughs> honestly, when I look at Pacific Mall, that always made me raise my eyebrow. You have certain stores in Pacific Mall where they're selling like beanie babies and shit. Like yeah. how you how you survive enough of selling beanie babies. That's what I'm saying. Those type mm. of ones kind of made me think. But That's what I'm saying. Glow Place is going in though. Bro, Glow Place <laughs> is going in. But yo, trust me, we actually have to do like maybe like a like a, a boys chill day. Cause that place is crazy, bro. It's literally fucking you'd be surprised that yo, this is only 75 bones to get in here. You can sleep there at night because it's 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. They have a whole mm. separate room. That place is like insane. The first time I went there and I'm like seeing all the sh- decorations, chandeliers and shit, I'm like, nah. 
There's no way. There's no way they're paying for all this for seven dollar entry ticket. <laughs> it was dead as fuck when I went to. No, but they probably okay. They also have like what concessions? Like you can buy food there. You, and could, you could definitely buy dinner food. and stuff there. Okay, but bro, okay, I'll I'll, I'll <laughs> say this much. And I, I put I actually say when I do go out sometimes. I don't really check the price. I like to ball out a little bit, especially I'm taking my girl out. You know, word, we had word. some fun. We went there. We got like sushi. We actually got a whole lobster. Um, and all in, I spent less than three or four bills. Okay. So if the top spenders are only spending three, four bills, like, bro, like, how are you paying for that? <laughs> but price? how busy is it? When I, I, I might be more busy now, but when I went, which was right after the pandemic, 2021 time, it was pretty dead. But it, it's blessed. I wouldn't want it to be jam packed anyways. It wouldn't be that nice of experience. Oh, but I have a sick idea. Have you guys seen that Nordic spa in Whitby? That yes. Thermia spa. Thermia, I went there Thermia, before. That's yeah, what it's called. It's sick? Yeah, it's is called. that as nice as Go Place? It's all outdoors. It's okay. all outdoors. They got like pool, hot tub and pools. They got like a hot and cold concept going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's not as private. I think that's the what I'm outdoor saying. vibe isn't as private. That's more legit, right? They yeah. can't afford to do all the crazy stuff that they're doing at Go Place because yeah. no one's going to come pay for it. Yeah, but we, should, we should hit up Thermia. We probably do a podcast there, I feel like. We could do a podcast there. I sure. Sure. We do a podcast sure. there. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty, they're pretty sure. jokes. That'd be God, sick. Nah, cause, yo, the thing is about Go Place is not, it's not co-ed, right? It is. No, but like the, the, yeah, the hot tubs aren't co-ed. Nah, the hot tubs are not, but everything else, the saunas, the everything else is pretty much co-ed. The saunas co-ed? The saunas is co-ed, yeah. That's mod. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you were yeah. there, like you said, no one else was there with your girl? When I was with my girl, it was, I don't want to say it was dead, but there's a lot of times we're in sauna solo dolo. Yeah, for sure. Especially yeah. if you go late nights, you're blessed. So you got some crazy sauna no. stories? No, I don't have any crazy sauna stories. You got stories. the studio stories? You got the sauna stories? No, no, <laughs> no sauna stories for me. Still. That's crazy. Okay, yo, so DK, what do you think is your biggest achievement as an artist so far? My biggest achievement, I would say, is just being able to put on shows independently, um, run events on my own where like I can headline events. That's kind of big for me as an artist, I would say. And coming on this podcast as well, right? <laughs> sure, that's up there for sure. I appreciate you guys. I rock with you guys. Come Bro, on. DK, what's sick with you is, man, we've done a ton of artists before and shout out to every single artist we've gone on here so far. Mm -hmm. But something that differentiated you from everybody else is people are listening to your music. And again, no disrespect to the Damn. artist. No, 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 wait, no, no. what the hold on, hold on, fuck? Hold on. Let me preface that more. What no disrespect fuck? to the artists we've had in the past, but mm. a lot of the artists we got are like they're up and coming and wait, stuff. Who, 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 who? Everyone so far. I'm not going to name drop, but any, what anyone. What do you mean, buddy? Any, we had like. Janie, okay, Roadrunner. Okay, okay, okay. Not counting Janie and Roadrunner because those guys are established in the city. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about more the up and coming <laughs> ones like like Spitty, like Rax, like Vinny. I'm not involved in this like, conversation. Like Link. And again, all respect to everyone who came on the podcast because you guys are fucking crushing it. Mm -hmm. But the difference is you've been in the game for two years, mm -hmm. but your fucking Spotify streams are fucking nuts. Yeah. So Averaging yeah, 58,000 yeah, yeah. monthly listeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Two years, three years in the game. Well, what's the mm -hmm. hack with that? How, yeah, what's how, the hack? Um, first of all, shout out to all the artists that are up and coming doing their oh, thing, you know? Big ups to everyone. It's definitely an uphill battle, but you just got to stay consistent, bro. Like, you got to just have a purpose, have a plan, and not really do it for the results, you know? Mm -hmm, You'll have mm -hmm. good times, bad times, up and down, but you just got to keep going regardless. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going, it's going but most the secret jump. sauce, bro, because everyone's working hard everyone's you know like whatever but but quite clearly you're nah, doing there's different. no sauce i actually when i was doing a show in windsor i put together a show i ran into um zach md motivator on instagram i was oh okay. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Ran, um but yeah basically i ran into zach when i was handing out flyers and he has a big following like millions yeah. of followers so oh, yeah him pu putting me on his platform definitely turned me up shout out to zach but even before then it was just that hustle, you know? I think yeah. I have an entrepreneur spirit, so I just, you just keep going, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't get discouraged by it, you know? Oh, for sure, for but, sure. Yeah. Even yeah. his music, too. I don't know if, how much you've heard, but, like, it's different. It's not like the traditional Toronto rap. We for said sure. that. That's so cool. Sure, you know, sure, Afro beat sure. style. That's why I wore the throw, bro. I'm like, yo. <laughs> I'm trying to feel like my boy does. <laughs> Shout out to you, fam. I appreciate that. <laughs> I just try to make different sounds, bro. I don't ever want to feel like I'm being put in a box or, like, yeah. categorized under anything yeah. so i just try to be as open as i can versatile as i can and i like all types of music so i make all types of music oh for you know? sure yeah for Yo, sure. so so with that many streams so 58k uh monthly listeners what's the bag like for that Ooh. the bags there still like i'm doing music full time you know thank god so i'll say that it's so just how spotify roughly like how can a, how much can artists expect to make with like let's just say 50k streams Ah, uh, that's tough, bro. I don't have a number because that Spotify monthly listeners number, it, it fluctuates as well. But let's just say it is 50. Bro, I don't even know. It's hard. It's really hard for me to give you a number, dog. I can't, I can't give you a number. You can give us a range. I think, what, every million views is like seven I'll bucks? i say maybe, 
you definitely make like two bags a month, two bands a okay. month at least. If you're getting fifty thousand listeners, fifty thousand monthly that's, listeners, that's pretty good. That's solid. Yeah, but there's many avenues that comes from. You have Spotify, YouTube, app, and then when it goes to your DSP, it all combines together. Yeah. So it's, unless you're really looking at the analytics, it's tough to see exactly what. Okay. What you know. And are you independent or are you yeah, signed? Yeah, I'm independent. Oh, you're, independent. you're still independent. 100 independent. Oh, really? You're not trying to sell your soul? Nah, 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 nah. I can't do that. What about for like two million bucks? Brother, my soul's priceless. Okay, okay. I like that. I like. That. I like that. He sold his, his soul for some Burberry clothes, but Burberry. How? how, how what are you even how wearing? You Burberry. That's How's crazy, it? bro. Actually, I'm, wearing I'm wearing the belt. I'm wearing the belt. I'm wearing the belt. What's the soulless vibe like? How do you feel with no soul? Oh, amazing. Amazing, eh? Yeah. Say no. You wear Burberry every day. Say no. The girls like Burberry, bro. For sure, I hear that, brother. Not for me, though. Nah, I'm praying up all day. I'll praise to the most high, for sure. When, when I, me too, bro. I'm a religious guy, bro. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's wrong with this guy. Mm-hmm. Well, I do pray every night. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, nah. so, okay, so how quickly did your monthly listeners just, boom, go crazy like that? It was a gradual thing, man. I remember, my fr- actually, my first song went crazy i won't lie the first song ever dropped for you my debut single went crazy Um, but it was covid so like the clubs were closing that so Mm. i couldn't really get that club love but in the streets it was going crazy i was getting bare love Mm -hmm. so it was just from there gradual gradual took some time but it was gradual always always gradual okay so i'm I'm gonna be selfish real quick so you said your debut single it just popped off like literally your, your first fucking song right yeah yeah why do you think that was was it you already kind of had a following at the time? Was it like, did you do something? That shit was hard. That shit was hard, gang. Go listen to it. That shit was fucking hard. It, the track was, it was just hard. crazy. Hard. That shit was, video was tough. I had girls on the yacht, fucking girls in a condo during COVID, turning up. Like, people weren't even allowed outside. There was five, what, five right. people per house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in that shit busting. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Bro, it's so crazy because during that, that period, 2020, 2021, there's a lot of people who got through like, but not got through, got into depression. Mm-hmm. Their careers fell apart. They lost their jobs, their savings, mm-hmm. craziness. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of people who popped off, especially anybody who's yeah. in the industry, whether you're a content creator, artist, social media, anything in the entertainment bracket. It was like, it was sick. Yeah. That's where I got my big, you know, my big up moment. Same with Redis. Mm-hmm. And it's sick to see another person just taking advantage of a time. For like sure. you said, at the time, it's like you can only have five people. Mm-hmm. But then, then there's like the, the rule breakers and just yeah, fucking yeah. fucking shit up, Come right? On. <laughs> yeah. Come on. And that's that's sick, bro. Like, mm-hmm. again, like, yeah, was it right or wrong? Who cares? But it worked, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because sure. the one thing I noticed is with whatever you do, whether it's a <clears throat> podcast, making music, creating content, is if you do what everyone else is doing, mm-hmm. no one's going to notice you at all. But if you exactly. zig slightly... It's exactly. like, even the haters are going to like, what the fuck? <laughs> and they'll start hating on that. And then it starts a trend. Bro, it's- honestly, I feel like we're, we're living in a time where everybody wants to fit into a box or fit into a lane so bad mm. that it kills originality. They forget that yeah. you want to stand out. And oh, that only sure. comes from being yourself, being an individual. You can't oh, sure. mold around so what someone else's thing is. It's not, not going to pop off. Oh, for sure. Off. For sure. Yeah. And with your origins in music, are, have you been a solo act? Or have there been guys around you that were like also making music? I've always been a solo act, but like I said, like when I was younger, I had my dogs, shout out my niggas from 34, and we'd always make music together. Like we'd go to my nigga, twins had a crib, we'd just go there and just make songs. Okay, like okay. Seven and eight, putting songs on fucking yeah. vibe.to and shit. Like, Sick. Yeah. Nah, cause that's, that's crazy, man. For That's what kind of blows my mind is as an independent artist, like not just labely, but also it's not like you have any famous friends. No. You don't have a following going on, like no. starting off, and now you position yourself to be in a spot where. The listeners was big because yeah. these days anybody could buy followers, right? But like yeah, yeah. seeing the listeners and then mm-hmm. numbers don't lie. Mm-hmm. And also like headlining at performances and, and yeah. even doing opening stuff. Like sure. it was crazy, right? Sure. Explain what was that like? What was that like being on stage, you know, sharing the stage with guys like Smiley who've been working with Drake, guys like Ram Riddles who've mm-hmm. been like very iconic names in the city. What was mm-hmm. that like? Brother, personally for me, I expected all this shit. Like I've always expected to be great. Jeez. I never did anything to not be great. Yes, so sir. This is just what comes with greatness. You yes, just that's fucking that's great a, shit. That's an amazing answer. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. I really fucking like that answer. Bro, them, it's no caps, facts. Yeah. yeah. You need to have that mindset, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's sure. crazy. Cause bro, you're you're spinning game. There's so many guys who they they start and they they're already defeated. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I've been to so much. Like, bro, how many times you post a YouTube video and go like, ah, oh, fuck, this is gonna, this is gonna be dog shit. You know, and it's like that's the wrong mentality versus mm-hmm. like you give it your all. Mm-hmm. And a, a place where I'm at now, like, I'll post something and go like, yo, this is gonna be sick. Yeah, yeah. You know, like exactly. this is like I put in the fucking work. It's it's yeah. a solid video. Everything's mm-hmm. perfect. Mm-hmm. Boom. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, it's it's so crazy that little mindset shift. And how much yeah. difference it could be, Knowing right? yourself is very important. Knowing oh. yourself is very important. Bro, it's crazy. Yeah. Do you ever deal with that at all? Like the self-doubt? Bro, it doesn't matter. I feel like self-doubt is a part of human nature. Those mm. are emotions and feelings that every human experiences. But those mm. shouldn't be hindrances on what you're trying to do. If you're really trying to do something great. Like, you mm. know that doubt is a feeling that mm-hmm. you cannot avoid. Mm. So that shouldn't have What does that mean Like how does that affect you What you're doing as a man It shouldn't affect shouldn't anything affect, yeah. Well I think the other thing That both of you guys Kind of said was Instead of self doubt On like a, like a micro scale Like you're talking about One video Or for you it could be Like one song I think overall No Like you, we didn't start YouTube to fucking Not make it And you didn't start music To fucking not, not make it yeah. Right So I think Sure everyone has Their one bad video Or their one song That like you think Is fucking sick But everyone's like Oh you know Like mm-hmm. maybe Maybe don't post this one Right Like, <laughs> yeah, like you yeah. post a one snippet And you're like This one's gonna go crazy And like no one's showing you That's like oh like fuck <laughs> you know i'm sure i'm sure that happens to artists fucking everyone everyone yeah normal so i think it's i think it's sick I, like i said i really like your answer because a lot of people they start something it's, it's okay to start something without knowing where it's gonna go but at least fucking go all in yeah. right like if you don't know how you're gonna be an artist at least just fucking go all into being an artist go to the mm-hmm. studio clock in the hours mm-hmm. i think that just makes it way easier and you just believe in yourself more that way well, that's a big sure. thing sorry i just want to add to that i feel like a lot of artists are like half stepping you know what i'm trying to say like mm-hmm. they say they're artists but they're like doing construction or they're like mm. working at walmart like i get the grind you have to get your change but you should still be an artist first you can't be like if someone asks you are you an artist you're like trying to not say yeah or you're not sure uh, that's not good for you yeah 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 yeah, yeah. You're not really and i actually feel that too bro I've, I've struggled with that for especially in the early days it's, it's hard like well you're not fully established and so mm-hmm. like what the, what, do you, what the fuck did you do it's like yeah, do i say i'm a youtuber and the guys don't think i'm i'm fucking unemployed or do i just <laughs> make up some bullshit a lot of time i go yeah i'm in marketing and stuff like, yeah <laughs> yeah you have to say that like family parties yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when parents would, like, other parents would ask like oh so what do you do oh, i'm in sales so i'm in marketing bro I, this morning bro i was on a phone call with someone from india one of my aunts mm-hmm. uh she's not watching but shout to you uh, <laughs> and uh, she's like your uncle's asking like what do you actually do I'm like i make youtube videos she's like what does that mean i'm like oh fuck I'm like marketing for brands and companies <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not gonna get it. it. Flies over the head, but I know, I know. <laughs> they want a political answer. They want yeah, to, yeah. They want you know. want to know down to dollars and cents what makes sense, right? Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. You talk about your education route. You kind of touched on it before we started the podcast. Yeah, bro. Did you, you actually went post post high school. Yeah, I went. So I went to university at University of Windsor. Fucking, I started doing that, and then I just went through like an epiphany of like what life is. I dropped out of school at university. And then I was just chilling for a little bit. Then I got into real estate. Oh, shit. Real, oh, wait, what the fuck? Real estate, yeah. Went to real estate college, banged that out. And then even that, I just felt like it wasn't it for me. You know what I'm saying? So. Wait, did you go through the Aria program? Yeah, I went to Aria and then I made some change after. And then once I started making change, I just went, I paid for the rest of my university. I went back to university, paid for myself, and then got my degree. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, what brokerage yeah. were you with? I was with uh, Century 21, and then I was with Remax. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you were a real estate agent. So I was a real estate agent. <laughs> you were selling homes and shit. I was hustling, knocking door to door. I was selling cribs on the spot, broski. That's crazy. I swear to God. Bro, they see you coming in, and they're like, yo, yo. And you're like, nah, bro, I'm the fucking real estate agent. Like, chill. <laughs> I just realized, it, did, it, was, it was just another form of slavery, bro. Like, I, oh, for I sure. feel like I wasn't being myself. <laughs> I'm like, put, like, not living in my truth, you know? Oh, for sure. And so I had to dead that. Nah, I feel that, bro. I feel like I. it's crazy because me and Rudy actually had a similar route. Nice. We both, I didn't actually end up getting my license, but he actually had his license. Nice. And I was like, because the, the mindset was, yo, self-employed is better than having a job. For sure. But then when you start realizing, yo, when you're self-employed, low-key, it's, it's worse than a job in a certain degree. You make more money, but like you have less free time. Yeah, fucking okay. working all the time. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and, you know, the content just started working. We started uh-huh. getting paid and we could focus on that now. But that's interesting, man. Yeah. So you were actually crushing as an agent? Like, what were your numbers like? Bro, I don't know. I wouldn't say I was crushing it, but I was definitely making more bread than I was prior, and I was making more bread than my colleagues or like my age yeah, yeah, yeah. bracket. You know what I mean? Mm. And it, it was good. I got myself a little band, you know what I'm saying? Bought Sick. a rolly and shit. Sick. Oh you know shit! Know so <laughs> it came up a little bit, and then yeah, COVID really. COVID came and it just kind of changed it up. And then even prior to COVID, I was working on a project with a couple of a couple of business partners that took me away from real estate. So. I was already weaning out of there. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. What, you want to talk about that project? 
Uh, not really. The project didn't go the way I wanted to go. I don't want to say too much. Okay, okay. So I'll leave it. Like, leave <laughs> that there for now. Yeah. Okay, okay, fair, fair. All right, that, that's, that's, that, that's that was real estate. Uh, was a curveball. That, that was a curveball stuff. Yeah. Wait, how old yeah. were you when you were a realtor? Bro, I dropped out of university. Probably started doing real estate age twenty three. I was a realtor. Twenty three. Yeah. So you're like 26? Now I'm like, no, no I'm 31. I'm 92. I just turned 31 this summer. Oh, I, I can't do math. I know yeah, I'm brown, right. but I can't do yeah, math. Yeah, 31, 92, baby. That's sick, as, that's sick as fuck, man. That's yeah. a crazy transition to go fucking uni, real estate, back to uni. Yeah. I'm then now fucking rapper. Rapper, artist. What, wait, what, were, what did you say you were in school for? Psychology. I studied <laughs> psychology. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. That's bro. A Bro, I, I feel like everything in my life was just like a stepping stone to something else. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to learn what I learned from one chapter to move to the next chapter and understand what's going on. And even right. what I learned through real estate and my entrepreneurship is helping me in music. I oh, think that's what separates sure, yeah. me from a lot of these artists. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's crazy. You're like, you know, like like Shrek says, you're like an onion. Sure. I'll what? Take it. He's like an onion. An onion. Yeah, because onions have layers. Yeah. Oh. You know, watch the movie? <laughs> No, I did, but that's your favorite movie, right? That's my favorite movie, man. Yeah. What movie is it? Shrek. Shrek. Okay. Yeah. Remember how he goes like, "Donkey, I'm like an onion." Yeah. Because onions have layers. layers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, up, no cap. Big up Shrek, man. Okay, yeah, do yeah. that again. Yeah, uh, what do you, do you remember what he said exactly? I'll actually say it properly. No. Just say what you just like, said. Say, like, "Donkey, I'm like an onion." Because onions have layers. <laughs> 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 fucking shout out Austin Powers, bro. It's fucking God. That's yeah, that's a, that's a curveball. Real estate, eh? And then psychology, and then was it music right after psychology, or? Nah, so like, <laughs> went to university, dropped out. Started doing real estate, went back <laughs> to university, got my degree, continued doing real estate. Then I stopped doing real estate to start a business project. Then COVID hit. Then I went right into music. Crazy. That's pretty, that's fucking, that's an interesting yeah. Chain events. Did you go to university for yourself or was it some pressure from the parents? Bro, I was playing basketball actually. I was oh. playing basketball in high school. What the fuck? This guy really is nice, a fucking bro. onion, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he really has some layers. Yeah, yeah, I was nice, bro. Like, we won every. I, I went to. I was in at Vanny for like junior high and then I got kicked out. I went to a next school, Lori. <laughs> Wait, why'd you get kicked out from Vanny? Bro, shit. That's a whole other story. Just young <laughs> niggas, bro. <laughs> you gotta give us a quick one. Huh? What'd you do? Bro, it wasn't just me. A bunch of us got kicked out. We were just too hot, bro. Just doing a bunch of hot young boy shit. You like what? <laughs> bro, skipping class, jamming youths at Scarborough Town. Like, just dumb shit, bro. <laughs> so, then... It, Yo, you know, you're the guy that took my fresh white Air Forces. <laughs> <laughs> That's a guy, bro. This is a fucking guy. <laughs> hey, Scarborough Town Center, Can, can you get them back? <laughs> can I get them back? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> God. It wasn't me. Yeah, you have an interesting life, man. And then, yeah, man. how long you play basketball for? Like... I was playing basketball like grade <laughs> eight till I finished high school. High school, I was nice, bro. I'm telling you, like no, no, but I mean like post high school, like like oh, how long were you playing? To, so I went to university and the coach did me dirty, bro. That coach did me dirty. Fuck that fuck guy. Fuck that guy. Real shit. Yeah. yeah. What's his name? Bro, coach Oliver. Fuck, fuck you. you fuck you, bro. <laughs> Honestly, fuck you. Peon. And then fucking, yeah. So I, I decided I'm not ever going to put my future in a man's hands again. And then ah. I just went even more independent. You know what I'm saying? That's a big lesson, eh? Yeah, for sure. Wait, so what did, what did Oliver do? Like, how do you like... He just he doesn't stringing man him along. Like, making it seem like, yeah, come. I want you to be a part of our, our shit. Made me commit to the school. And then when we get there, he just switched up on me. Like, Wait, he just benched you? He just like started moving weird. Like... He didn't even put me on the squad at all. I was like, bro, what, what are you doing? What the fuck? Yeah, it was weird, bro. And then I started taking it personally. Like, maybe I had to do things to improve. So I started, like, working out three times a day. I got, like, way better. And then I saw what he was doing to other players. Like, there was one guy, Anthony Otley. This guy was, like, some all-Canadian superstar. And the man's sitting on the bench. What? And I realized, bro, this shit's fucked up. Like, was he a racist? I don't know. That guy's a, definitely a cracker for sure. We're all, <laughs> we're, 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 start, we're, all, we're everyone on the team white. Guy. We're all the like, nah. A couple of my dogs were on the team. A couple of my dogs were on the team, but fuck that guy, <laughs> Chris Oliver, dickhead. Fuck that guy for sure. That's crazy. Should, Can you imagine? You, you you're fucking. You get recruited to school. You tell all your boys like, yo, I'm gonna be playing fucking this uni. You get there and like, not only we're not we're not gonna bench you, we're just not putting you on the fucking team. Yeah, that was crazy. Wait, I don't need to pay for your uni when you go for. For playing a sport or it was weird bro it was a very weird situation like we were just corresponding via email he was always like, like yeah we're gonna take care of shit when you get here like i feel like i got like 
Did you leave another opportunity for that one? For sure. Oh, like, yeah? Definitely, yeah. Damn. That's why I was kind of pissed. Like, I had opportunities, like, to play at the Ryerson. I had people that wanted to play with me and shit. I had a couple um, JUCOs in the States that wanted me to go over. But I, I was like, yo, I'm going to go to Windsor and see where I go on. And then, yeah, man, did me That's dirty. Fucked. Wow, yeah. fucking Windsor. That's Have you, you ever been to Windsor? I've been to Windsor a couple of times. Yeah, Windsor's an interesting place. I love Windsor. Shout out Windsor. Yeah. Great city. Have you Sh- been to Shout out Chatham, bro. Have you ever been to Peely Island? What is that? It's like a shit island in Windsor. No, 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 no. Never been there. Never heard. <laughs> I want to ask you, do you own any properties since you've been yeah, a real estate yeah, agent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my hands on a couple of things. Um, I started actually investing in other aspects, though. Like, I don't want to speak on it too much because, you know, they're always watching, man. But, like, yeah, I always put my hands in certain avenues, try to make sure that I can sustain, make life easier, leverage your money so that your lifestyle gets better. So I'm all about that for sure. That's fucking sick, bro. Yeah. That's fucking sick. I think real estate and just investing in general, it's so unique because it opens up new opportunities for you. It really, once you get certain past a certain point, it really starts feeling like free money. Yeah, yeah, know? for sure. Like, the residuals, man. When you start seeing residuals, when you start seeing money get made out of nothing, <laughs> it changes the way you see money in, yeah. in general. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. sure. For sure. Yes, sir. Yo, so, yo talk to the story of your first time getting booked to perform. Yes. First time getting booked to perform, I did a couple... <laughs> free shows actually to start i was doing free shows actually my first booking was in africa i was in sierra leone west africa Jeez. and i got a booking to do a show with another gentleman and they paid me at what it was probably like 150 bucks or something like that Shit. but i just wanted to be in front of a crowd just like you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So that's sick i did i took the gig and i rocked out and then Came back to the city, did some free gigs, and just started building from there. Once you build the momentum, now they got to come with it. They got to come oh, with it. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> now, I want to ask, because actually, after hearing more of your story, it makes more sense. When you're at a position where you're making music, you were at, looks like you're already at a financially stable point. I think, yeah. When I started making music, I was already out of survival mode. I was already kick up, you know, yeah. to be able to sustain my life. And then it was kind of like, what do I like? What do I start to enjoy? explore my own self and what i enjoyed out of yeah. life and yeah because that, that's big because like, if you were working a job for example there could be opportunities and then you gotta book time off of work and travel yeah, you know it's tactic especially for, and that's that's a way for a lot of like when i was talking earlier about some of the the entertainers we had on the podcast and passes no shitting to them like they're in the trenches right now right they still have the nine to fives they got to kind of work around their careers but it's sick when someone like you comes up and you're already you know established quote unquote or you mm-hmm. are out of survival mode i like that better yeah, out of yeah. survival mode you can just go fucking 100 all in because yeah man not a lot of people are doing it the way you did right because like you one performing is one thing but also mm. performing with big names that means yeah. they recognize that you have talent for sure otherwise they wouldn't want to fucking have you open yeah yeah for sure it had it took a while like i remember 2015 i was in windsor actually or 2014 i was in windsor i just dropped out and i was in the studio with some of my dogs and we were making music but i knew i wasn't in a position that was stable enough to get the music where i wanted to be so i just mm. decided i'm gonna just grind a little a little longer mm. until i'm comfy and then during COVID, the opportunity just popped up, and I said, "Yeah, hell yeah, I'm on it." That's sick. Okay. It is about timing as well, and preparation for sure. I say as fuck. Mm-hmm. Walk us through a story of one of your best times performing or at an event. Best time performing. Hmm. Actually, Calgary wasn't bad, yo. Shout Calgary, Calgary wasn't <laughs> bad. Um, I did a show in Markham, Ontario. That wasn't bad. I think. I just think every time I perform, because people don't really know, didn't know who I was at the time, it was good for them to see me and really, you see their eyes light up, you know? Mm. Um, now that I'm thinking, there was a show I did at Adelaide Hall. Okay. And people, people didn't really know who I was. And when I got on the mic and they started hearing me perform, you look at the crowd and you see them like get sold, like they're sold. Once they see you and they see your energy, they're like, whoa. And they mm. become fans like in that yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's always a great feeling when you see their eyes light up and then you're like, oh, I got a fan here. I got a fan yeah, here. And while you're performing, yeah, yeah. you see it and then that's the energy crazy. just bounces off. So that's, that's dope as shit. Dope Yo, as shit. So I'm actually curious. So when you go and perform and like, let's just say someone who doesn't know your music, like you said, becomes a fan. Yeah. Do you find that that's actually a pretty good way to get new listeners? Or do you think social media, like how do you rank the two? Is social media more Ooh. important or do you think the value of a fan that randomly sees your, you performing I is think better? Honestly, per- personally, the value of a fan that sees you live 
is always better. Like you could always see someone online and see them based off pictures or videos, but like when you see somebody live in the flesh and you see it's who they difference. are for real. Right. It's energy, right? The, yeah, the energy doesn't lie. And then that's I feel like that has more retention. Somebody right. like that who has a memory of seeing you in real life. That will retain in them more than someone you just clicked your page and liked a, a video. You know what I'm saying? It's probably better, like I guess, lead per se as well, because they most likely paid to already be there. Yeah. So you know that there's someone who would actually yeah. pay for shows as yeah. opposed to someone on social media. Exactly. Could be, yeah. And you could, and you know Fair. that there's somebody who's actually interested in music. They have a, they like to see music and hear music. Exactly in person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. That's for sick. sure. That's that fucking interesting. That is pretty interesting. sick, man. Yeah. Like, I, when you said that. Yeah, I'm really visualizing. Like, imagine you're on stage, you're performing, and you're literally like, like almost like a game. You're seeing like fucking little <laughs> coins light up. You really you know? <laughs> brother, you just see their eyes like, br like they, their eyes just like open up, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they start vibing. They're smiling. They start dancing. It's a really good feeling, bro. Man. With music too, and especially now as I'm getting older, way more open minded. You know, when mm -hmm. you're younger, you listen to what your friends and family listen to, right? Yeah, but as yeah. I'm getting older, like. You could tell when music is good. Mm -hmm. You don't even know the artist. You don't mm -hmm. even need no language. Exactly. Shout out to my broski. He's from Sri Lanka. Yeah. Tamil guy. And he, he, he was putting me into some Tamil music. I couldn't even tell a lick of the language. Not mm -hmm. even one single word. And he's showing me like up and coming artists. And like, okay, this guy's okay. This guy's okay. Then he shows me a Nux guy. I'm like, bro, that guy could yeah, sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, guy's yeah. fucking talented, yeah, bro. Yeah. And I'm at home showing my, my, my family. Like, and they're like, wait, what the fuck? Why are you playing Tamil music right now? I'm like, Wait, which song, which song did you play for your family? Um, the remix. The remix. Uh, of that old classical song. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, yeah. that guy, bro, like, and it's crazy. I'm like, at, in that moment, I realized, I'm like, damn, like, it's not even about how hard your song is, what you're saying in the song. Yeah. It's like a whole package deal. You need to actually have a good voice. Yeah. The Obviously, the beat's so important to you. Yeah, and like, yeah. is a guy feeling himself? Because that's a big difference, yeah, right? There's yeah. a lot of guys that are, you know, we see, bro, we see so many guys do open mics. They go in the studio and they start talking and on like, the beat. They're just like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and then <laughs> and then, bro, there's a guy, the guy you saw today, like, mm -hmm. bro, like I felt it. The music was good. I never yeah. heard any of his songs in the past, but I'm like, Word. yo, I wanna, I wanna. I didn't get his contact down, but I'm like, yo, I wanna hear this guy's music, right? Word. That's an interesting thing. Music is a universal language. Exactly. So you make good music, you can be very successful. If you make shitty music, no matter how many friends you have, like, you'll own. That's why we see celebrities. They only go so far. They only make a certain amount of singles before yeah. they realize, yeah, like nobody gives a fuck about me. Like, not my music, at least. They just care about me. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. I, I think that's like one of my favorite parts about traveling as well is when I link like homies in different countries mm -hmm. and I'd be like yo play like whatever the fuck people listen to over here mm -hmm. and like my one cousin in Switzerland he listens to like music in like uh, Dutch right so like, he'll put me on like fucking German drill mm -hmm. Italian drill and these men are spitting in different languages yeah, and I'm yeah. like yo I don't know what the fuck fucking Mario and Luigi are saying right now, yeah, but this yeah. shit's hard. going crazy. Brother, music itself is a language. Like, yeah. Yeah. same yeah. with English, French, oh, Punjab, sure. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Music is its own language where oh, once sure. you feel the vibe and the frequency you know already if it's a go or it's not a go. Yeah. You can Bro, feel it. Shout out to the Punjabi music, like rappers yeah. too. Because yeah. I'm obviously, I don't speak Pun Punjabi or hit, what is that? Punjabi. Punjabi. Yeah, I don't speak yeah, Punjabi, yeah. but bro. I, Some they, of their songs be hitting they too. They just be going crazy. Yeah, I be seeing that. I be seeing a little, a little uh, fizz, a little buzz up in Toronto, yeah. and especially oh. Brampton and them yeah. places. I see it online. Yeah. The Punjabi music's going hard. It's going they hard. Get views, yeah, man. They, they get go crazy. Yeah, they get views because they get a lot of support from back home too. A lot of people, dog. That's what I'm saying. Like, same with Africa, bro. Like, there's a billion people over there you know what i'm saying like toronto dog. toronto's a, a crazy place bro yeah. honestly i'm glad i left this city if i didn't leave toronto and go to africa go to sierra leone i probably wouldn't be where i'm at in my career because i feel like the city just is very egotistical it's like people act like love isn't free like it costs money to show <laughs> love or something it's weird bro like, yeah. I never God. felt that anywhere else but here. How long did you spend in Africa? Uh, two years, almost two years. Oh, you yeah, actually there. two years just yeah. doing music? Just doing music. Oh, I did a shit. couple of some business stuff. You know, as an entrepreneur, okay, I got my okay. hands into some things, but music was definitely a cornerstone of what I was doing out there. I was able to definitely oh, expand a lot what during my fuck? time. What the fuck? What the fuck? I'm on road, man. I'm outside. Onion. I'm always moving. <laughs> what the That's always fuck? moving, bro. Two years always. in Africa. Yeah. And just... As a performer, as an artist, I just nah. At first, I went out there. Okay, so I made the first my first single out here in Toronto. It okay. was out already. Boom, it's doing its thing, and then the restrictions just started to get crazy. Like I remember at one point, they're like, "You can't go out. You can't go get food unless you have a, a vaccination or some crazy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. nuts. After that, I said, "I'm out of here, fam." Like, and then I cut. Then I cut. God. Damn, that's yeah. That's fucking that's so crazy. fascinating, bro. It got crazy. That's fucking. Any crazy stories that happen when you're down in Africa? Bro, that shit opened my eyes, bro. It opened my eyes to a lot, actually. Just the conditioning, the way we're conditioned here in Canada, our thought processes, the way we handle our day-to-day -day operations, even our 
calendar year, the things we do on a calendar year. Oh, we got uh, Valentine, then you got Easter, then you got whatever's Saint next. Pat, like there's some, Hattie, yeah, Christmas, same path. Yeah, it's yeah. like you're kind of stuck in this loop. But over there, I, I felt a sense of freedom that I've never had before. And I fell in love with it. Like I went there just to see, you know. I could have left at any point. but I You went on your dolos, your solo? Yeah, I went on my dolos. You know, my people were out there, though. Okay. My people were out there, so I met them out there. And then I was out there dolo. They left. They came back to Canada, and I was just out there. That's fucking sick, bro. That's actually bro. fucking... Yo, like, I want to go to, like, Sri Lanka for, like, a couple yeah. months now. And just <laughs> fucking you should, fuck? bro. You should, dog. I highly, highly recommend it. That it just... That perception, that perspective shift, it yeah. opens up your mind so much more. 100%. You know what I mean? So bro, I'm, that's why traveling's so oh. fucking beautiful, man. But yo, you know what's crazy about that is that makes so much sense because now when we we're, we're listening to the, I think, what's some, the what, sensation? That's when you was, the, you was I, the, I the dropped, video you dropped? I dropped a track actually today. It's called Kaylee with my guy from Sierra Leone. Shout out Shwaibu. Okay, okay. It just dropped today. Okay, you know sick. I mean? so that's, that's interesting because when we're listening to that, like, you can't fake that, right? Like, no, you I mean, can't. a lot of people, they're from Jamaica or they're from Africa and they obviously have their mother tongue. They mm -hmm. speak it at home. So yeah, when yeah. they in the studio, it sounds fine. Mm -hmm. But like you actually being there, that's a now I have now when I listen to it, it's a different perspective because it's yeah, almost yeah. like it's an actual African singing the song. Yeah. You for know? Sure. It's a difference in like me who's a, a, an Indian, but I spent mm -hmm. most of my life in Canada. Yeah. Making an Indian song would be crazy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> be fucking crazy. Yeah. But like you actually, it's almost like you did your time, you know? Brother, the the I feel like <laughs> the music changes based on where you are as well. Like yeah, I know yeah, when yeah. I was in Sierra Leone, the energy was different. The type of music I was making was different. When I was in the UK, I was in the UK for a bit. And Jeez. the type of music I was making was different. When I'm in Toronto, the music's different. So depending on where you are, definitely that it affects the type of music you make. I'll say okay. that. Sick. Yeah, okay. He brought it out, so I have to fuck. We have to talk yeah. about it now. How was the UK? Like, what, what are some uh, main takeaways from out the there? UK was crazy. I loved it over there. It's like Toronto, but better. Like, yes. It's like <laughs> the <we> culture is <laughs> more rich. Yes. Okay. Um, here, I feel like in Toronto, the culture is segregated in the city. Like, if you want to go Chinese or something, you go Markham. Or if you want to get, like... Italians, you might go King City, you know, Brampton for, you know, Indians, Scarborough, you know what I mean? But there, everything's intertwined. You mm. got the, in the Perry Perry store and the African store and the Chinese store in the same complex. Yeah. Mm. So everything's intertwined and the shopping, dog, they got the drip, bro. Yeah, they, they got do the get drip, the drip, dog. The they track the suits. The they got the there. drip. Shout out Harrods. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Bro, it's so fucking cheap there, man. That's Fuck. Crazy, I, Cause bro, I love London. I'd be telling this guy, I'm like, yo, we got He's going to go London there. like in two, three weeks. Yeah. yeah I'm headed back. I'm doing a show out there in October. I got a show out there in October. Oh shit. Maybe if you're there, you can link up. Nah, I'm going in September. I'm fucking oh, I'm coming back on the sixteenth. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. But nah. that's, that's fucked. Okay, we are gonna wrap this up. I know we're on time crunch, but I want to ask you one more thing about networking mm -hmm. and being on stage with other artists. Yeah. How much of that's going on behind the scenes? Cause there's one thing to actually perform side by side by some of these celebrities, but how much of the, the networking is going on behind the scenes? Uh, some of it. You know, you got your, your team members, your team that's working to get you in certain positions and networking there. Um, but majority of it's still the music, bro. At the end of the day, people are booking you because they the hear music. what you got and they want that they want to have the representation for their event. So yeah. the music still comes first. But there is some networking involved. Like if you find out a certain man's on the same docket as you or a certain man's in the same show as you, you might link up with them after the show, go to the studio, see so you guys could cook up and network there. I would yeah, say, like, yeah, right. yeah, 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 at yeah. the events for sure. We're gonna see a smiley club coming soon. Uh, let's see what's up. Shout out Smigs, let's see what's going on. Smigs. You know, I'm open to whatever. Okay, I'm sick. open to whatever, you know. Sick, sick, Jeez, sick. That's now that's back. Okay, and then last question about music we want to ask. Uh, what would some advice you give to some people that are starting off to get their first gig booked? You just gotta be humble, man. You're not, I find a lot of artists. They want to do music because of this idea of fame or clout or power that's associated with it, but that's not what it's about. You want to put the best art out there and just focus on getting your art to as many people as possible. Mm. And once you can do that, take a few free gigs, go put your music out there. Once you build that momentum, then people will start offering you money. But if you're just sitting there rejecting free gigs because you think you're worth this and that, it's going to be tough, man. Yeah, Crazy. for free. Great advice. All right. Do you want to ask anything before we wrap it up? Um, yo, I think, yeah, no, I think that's, I, I think we're pretty good. Um, okay. But before we get into our final four, is there anything you want to talk about? Any other questions you have for us? No, nah, man, I think it's pretty straightforward. I, like I was saying to you guys before, I appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, I think it's a breath of fresh air. I think Toronto has so much talent, bro. And I mm. just think we need to find more ways to collaborate and be open to 
what you guys are doing as partners, as a collective, bro. Yeah. Because there's so much money to be made in this oh, city. I sure. see people from other countries, other cities come to our city and they're selling out these venues, making a fuck ton of money. And then when it comes to our own artists, one man can't do a song with this guy because he has beef with that guy or that person doesn't like this or this. Vet. It's like, bro, you guys don't want to eat. You don't see the opportunity we have. We're not going to be young forever, you know? Mm. So we just got to take advantage of our youth and kill that shit, really. Bro, you actually have a fucking lion's mindset, eh? Yeah? A hundred percent. Appreciate that, bro. That was the first time. Like, I've always thought about it in my head, but that was the first time I heard that verbalized. Especially in Toronto. Mm-hmm. I've never been big in the Toronto music scene as mm-hmm. a, you know, released really big in Toronto music. Mm-hmm. And then he'll go like, if we have this rapper on, we can't talk about this rapper. Because so I'm much saying, like, bro, like block polys, beef, yeah, right? Polys, but yeah. like you said, when you said we're not going to be young forever, because when everyone gets old, it's all said and done. You know they're what I'm like, saying, bro? When you're bro. sitting there when you're in your 40s and 50s, think about where you could have been if you weren't just being dumb and worrying about this guy and this and that. Like, bro, time doesn't stop, bro. It's crazy. Got to get it while we're here, man. But I do want to say, I'm not a politician. Please don't shoot me. You guys do your <laughs> thing. <laughs> Come on, it's love. Love, love, love. All day. No, it's sick. And then the last question I want to ask you, because you spend a lot of time in Windsor. Um, you asked me earlier that what was different between Calgary and Toronto. What would you say is the difference between st- spend time in Windsor as an artist versus being now in Toronto? Windsor's a lot slower. It's um, a lot more of a homey vibe. It's like more, they have a more of a community base where every artist knows another artist. People are more open to collabing and it's very more tight knit where everybody knows each other where toronto i could be in the city here doing my thing as a successful artist and there can be another successful artist in toronto that i've never heard of and they never mm, heard of me that's... whereas in windsor if people are doing well everybody kind of knows, knows. Mm. yeah so i guess that's the biggest difference word that's, sick. that's a good fucking that's answer all right we're gonna go into four. our final four so start off if you had to swap lives with someone for 24 hours who would you pick swap lives yep just for one day. Right now I'm gonna say probably Kevin Durant. KD, really? Jeez. Yeah. The that, cupcake. Is that what he is? <laughs> and everybody in the NBA, you pick KD. Why? Wait, yeah, why? I just think he's a guy. Like he's a guy. He's already proven himself. He's still young enough where he's living his life, but he's old enough where he has <laughs> enough wisdom. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, no, I'm still not over him leaving OKC to go to Golden State. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I know what I, you mean. I know what you crazy. Mean. I just feel like his lifestyle would be sick to live for 24 yeah, hours. You I know, know it would be for sure. It'd be kind of crazy. Sick. Mm-hmm. Our LeBron guy. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Yo, who's like, better, LeBron or KD? 100. Who's LeBron. better? LeBron. I don't know, bro. That's a tough one. They're different type of players. LeBron's a they better overall players. player, but KD got a that killer. Scorer. KD got that killer instinct in him for sure. Okay. I don't know. LeBron got that killer. I don't know. I'm not going to argue. I'm going to argue. Right, okay. <laughs> the next question we're going to ask is who do you say is the most motivating person of all time for you specifically? The most motivating person of all time for me personally? That's That's a tough one. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck Chris Oliver. <laughs> motivating. I want to say, actually, Meek Mill is pretty motivating. Ooh, yo, we me. have that a lot recently. I've done a couple of times, yeah, actually. that guy really watching his shit and just seeing the hunger and the unwavering passion and will for Dude. that long is like... Shout out Philly. Bro, yeah, you can't really... Yo, bro, he's in it to win it, bro, for yeah. sure. That's good. That's, that's good. a good answer. Okay, okay, let's just say from the day you were born till now, your whole life is written in a book. <laughs> What would the title of that book be called? What a life. What a life. What a life. What a life. That's fucking sick. Mm-hmm. Crazy. What a life. That's good. For I sure. like that. All right. And then the last question. If today was your dying message to the world, what would your last message be? Last message to the world? Stop being dummies. Take control <laughs> of your life. Don't let someone else or any other entity ruin, run your life. Take control of it and do what you want. We're all going to die. Do what you want. For sure. Fire. That's fucking phenomenal. And then before we wrap this up, you can make any plug. We want to ask what's next for you. For me, I'm working on a project. I'm going to try to get an album out by the end of the year. Nice. So I'm working on that. I have a bunch of content on the way, but that album got to come out, man. It's going to be fire flame for you guys. Sick. Let's go. All right, Redis, take us away. Guys, that is it for this number one podcast in Toronto. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe. All the links will be down below. And until next time, remember, stay seeking success. <laughs> stay seeking success. Stay seeking success. <laughs> it was like episode 64, bro. <laughs> yeah, you Let's guys, go. shout out to the station. Big up on all stations. David Kumar, you already know. Yes, sir. Follow me, let's tap in, let's work. Let's, let's go. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah.